this is Mike with the NetPix Options Academy. This is the weekly recap video for Monday, December 21st. So we're going to start out by taking a look at what's upcoming this week. We've got the holidays uh, coming up, the end of the year coming up. We'll take a look at uh, what we're expecting this week, take a look at some of the things that we're going to be doing in our own trading. We're also going to go back and take a look at a number of trades, a number of charts from last week as well. So let's start out by talking about what to expect here this upcoming week. We've got the shortened week here because of the uh, Christmas holiday. So whenever you get towards the end of the year, it come, it becomes a tricky time of year to be active in the markets. For me personally, it's probably one of my least favorite times of year to trade. Uh, because volumes, as we go throughout this week, my guess is going to be Monday and Tuesday will be pretty normal. As we start to get into Wednesday and Thursday, you can expect volumes to just drop off a cliff. When that happens, it just makes it more difficult to predict and get a feel for what the market's going to do. Because all, all of the internals that we look at, the, the volume numbers and the, the, the volatility levels in the markets, when the volume drops off and participation drops off, those become very unpredictable. And in a slow market, anything can happen. It doesn't take much to push the market in one direction or the other. There's an old saying, never sell a dull market. That's kind of what I'm expecting here this week. We're coming off of a week where we had some damage done on the downside. Last week was very, very ugly. We'll take a look at that in a second. So my guess is we're going to probably see some type of a grind to the upside, at least um, early this week. So for me, I'm still going to take trades. I'm just going to trade very, very small position sizes. I've been telling my students um, this upcoming week on anything new that triggers in, I'm going to be taking trades with just one contract. For In many cases, that's a fraction of what my normal position size is. So I'm going to try to protect capital. I mean, my trading year is basically done. We've had a really nice year. What I don't want to do is go out on a bad note, give back a ton of profit because I'm trying to you know, sneak in a couple more trades before the end of the year. So uh, I don't like to stay on the sidelines either. I find it difficult to stay true to your trading approach and true to your trade plans when you have no money on the line. You can always say, hey, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to trade them on a paper money account or I'm just going to watch the trades. But when you have no skin in the game, it becomes very difficult to stay disciplined. So I, even though I'm just trading one contract, it allows me to still stay in my daily routine, coming in, checking the charts, making sure I'm staying disciplined, um, managing my open positions correctly. I find it's much easier to do with a small position with live money on the line. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll be looking to sell some premium as well if I possibly can. I mean, if the volatility stays bid here, if it stays elevated um, from last week, we'll have a short little window where we can sell some premium as well. Um, that way we can still try to scratch out a profit if the market stays quiet like we anticipate it doing. So with that out of the way, that's kind of my plan of attack for this week. I'm going to trade Monday and Tuesday like normal, uh, just with smaller position sizes. And as we get towards the end of the week, you know, we may go into a, a time where um, if we start to get into Wednesday afternoon and into Thursday, we may just hold off on taking new trades. We'll just manage open trades there until we get past uh, the Christmas holiday. So looking back at last week, we had some nasty price action to the downside, right? I mean, we can see it on the chart from Thursday and Friday. What's really interesting about last week, we had the big Fed statement. The big Fed news on interest rates out. Everybody was anticipating the release, waiting. That was kind of our last big news event for the year. We, the news came out. The market initially rallied up. Wednesday afternoon, we saw a very, very strong close. You can see that we got a close up above all of the moving averages that we track here on the daily chart. This is the SPY, the ETF tracking the S&P 500. So everybody's just anticipating at that point. The market's probably going to move to the highs of the year, um, close right up near the highs uh, come the end of this week, right? However, we got into Thursday, and that, ch that tone just changed immediately. We saw some big time selling on Thursday. We saw a session we closed right now near the lows. Going back over the past number of months, we've seen very few cases where the markets actually close near the lows of the session. Oftentimes, even when we get the selling pressure, we bounce into the afternoon, bounce into the close. We didn't get that on Thursday. We saw a close near the lows, came in on Friday, saw a gap to the downside, and pretty much selling from the get-go on Friday. You can see this nasty-looking candle here. Um, Friday afternoon, where we close right down near the lows, right down near the 200 level, which is a strong area of support. 
We've already tested it once here recently. So the big test will be today seeing where the market opens. We're set to bounce. The futures are pointing to a higher open today. So if we hold that 200 level again, okay, I wouldn't be surprised if over the next week and a half to two weeks, we kind of drift to the upside from here. If that level does break, if we get some selling pressure to kick in on Monday, then that could totally change the game plan for this week. We could get some selling below that 200 level. So that's going to be the key line in the sand here come Monday. If you're still trading this week, make sure you're watching that very, very closely. On the upside, all of those moving averages, the cluster of moving averages up above us, those levels now become resistance. So that's what we'll be tracking there on SPY. Very similar story on the Dow. Very similar look and feel on the Dow chart. Uh, we closed right around the 171 level on Friday, so that's the key level of support that we'll be tracking early this week. Um, notice the volume numbers were very, very good last week. You know, we're getting this last little burst of energy here into the end of the year. I'm hoping that that carries forward into um, carries forward into January. Whenever that volume picks up and the volatility picks up, that just makes for a, a prime environment for us as options traders. So I'm hoping to see that um, heading into January. And then finally on the NASDAQ, we did finally start to get some selling pressure in some of the leaders that we've been looking at, Amazon and Google and Netflix and Apple. A lot of the big market leaders on the tech side got hit, and that's good to see. Uh, we haven't seen that very much really over the past number of months. The NASDAQ's actually led the charge to the upside. The next level here on the on the queues, we've got those 200 period moving averages, both the simple and the exponential moving averages right here, those, those red lines that we're approaching on the downside. So between 108 and uh, 109, I mean, those are some pretty strong areas to support if we do get some selling early this week. So I'll be watching those very, very closely. Um, looking at the VIX, we did get the VIX up into the low 20s last week. That's also great to see. Anytime you start to get the VIX up into the high teens, low 20s, it starts to open up our playbook. We're able to sell some premium. And with my anticipation that the market could get quiet here through the holidays, I'd like to get some short premium trades on over the next couple of days. So we'll be looking at, in many cases, because we're a little bit oversold in the near term, I'll be looking at some areas to sell some put spreads or potentially put on some iron condors. Um, some of the energy names look very, very attractive to me um, as far as looking for short-term bounces or some periods of consolidation kicking in. So I'll be looking at those areas. And then as far as the directional trades go, let's take a look at a couple of these. We're not going to have a chance to go through all these, but I'll um, we'll work through as many as we can here over the next few minutes. So here's Apple. Let me zoom out so it's a little bit easier to see. We had this trade last week. Uh, we skipped it initially. You can see that it triggered in here on Wednesday. Let me get my data box up. I'll give you that exact value. The reason we skipped it initially is because we had the Fed statement out Wednesday afternoon. Anytime we get into a Fed day, we do not take new trades the morning of Fed day. We only manage open positions. And then we look to get in sync. We'll look to take new trades the, in the, the afternoon session after the news is out. And that's exactly what we did. We came in Wednesday afternoon. We know what the market did after the Fed statement was out. We looked at it on the, the daily charts there a few moments ago. We saw the big rally up Wednesday afternoon and um, we'll close right near the highs. We came in Thursday, price action reversed, and we talked about what happened Thursday, Friday. We saw some nasty selling pressure. So we actually got in sync with this trade Thursday afternoon. The way that we treat these trades uh, with our approach, we're willing to get in sync with trades as long as the first target or the stop has not been hit and as long as we get back to the entry point. Just because I came in here Wednesday afternoon and saw price action way up here does not mean I just jump into that trade and just chase it at that point. Okay, I have to wait for price action to get back to that entry point. That's what exactly what happened on Thursday. So we took that trade. Um, I took it with a little bit more conservative approach. Um, I took it farther out in time. I took it with the monthly options. I took it with a put spread. Um, just trying to protect capital, knowing that we could get a little bit slow into the end of the year. Um, was not anticipating Friday's session at all. I'm going to take it for sure because um, we did hit first target. Stop has gone down to break even. So we're reducing risk here. That's a great position to be in. Now, ultimately, we would love to see one more push to the downside, get down to 105.32. But worst case here, the risk is off the table. I like that position heading into the end of the year. So, so far, so good on the Apple trade. Uh, some of the index products. 
we've been getting whipped back and forth. Um, we saw it a little bit on the daily charts where we've seen some really nice sized candles. The ranges have been great here of late. The problem is there's been very little follow through. I mean, Friday was the first day that we really got follow through on the downside. Otherwise, it's been a lot of big movement back and forth without any type of a trend developing. That makes it tricky because as swing traders, we need to see a little bit more movement. You know, we're not looking for the quick day trades back and forth. So it'd be great to see some of that follow through um, here heading into this coming week. Unfortunately, here on SPY, um, we, we, took, we took a look at the daily chart. We saw the gap from Thursday into Friday. Unfortunately, that gap prevented us from catching this short trade. We gapped below the entry point. So even though the system looks like it's moving great to the downside, we did not grab that trade. Okay, I'm currently flat on SPY. The gap prevented me from catching it. So unfortunately, I'm missing out on a profitable trade, but that's just taking what the market's giving us. We do not chase gaps. We wait for price action um, to get back to the entry point before we chase anything new. So we'll be sitting on the sidelines there on SPY. On the NASDAQ ETF, slightly different story because we did catch a short trade on Friday. Okay, we stopped out of a long trade. This long trade did trigger in, did not work out, ended up stopping out on Friday. We initiated a short trade, which is already moving down nicely. We just haven't hit any target levels yet. Our targets coming into this coming week, 109.76 and 108.56. The stop is up at 113.53. So we'll be tracking this trade uh, early next week or early this coming week. We just need some follow through here on the downside. And I apologize, guys. I'm a little under the weather here doing the video today. So my voice is starting to go. So if it starts to get starts to get a little faint, that is, you know why. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll hang in there this week. Uh, here's Google. We did hit first target on the long trade on Google last week. That was great. It allowed us to move the stop up to break even. We did get taken out of that trade on Friday of last week. We also triggered into a short trade. So here again, am I taking the short trade? Yes. I'm taking it with smaller position size, and I'm also taking it with a put spread. I'm trying to conserve capital here heading into the end of the year. I still want to take trades. I just don't want to be as aggressive knowing that there's a very good chance that price action could get a little choppy. So heading into this week, we've got targets at 745.36 and 736.57. The stop is all the way up at 780.20. So we'll see if we can get some follow through on the downside there. We mentioned that energy, uh, very attractive area for us. And here's a chart of XLE. Here's my thought process. I mean, energy, looking at the oil futures, oil has gotten absolutely beat up here the last number of months, but especially here just over the past couple of weeks. We're down near fresh lows, lows that we haven't seen in years. So we, we were able, number one, we were able to grab this short trade on XLE. Zoom in a little bit so you can see it. So this was a short trade that triggered in early last week. We had already closed out of it on Friday. Come Friday afternoon, we were already out of the trade, booking a nice profit. So just a great move to the downside there on XLE. But now I look at this chart and I say, okay, we're oversold in the near term. We've gotten beat up. We've seen a big move to the downside. As long as these energy products have volatility, that's decent, which many of them do. I'm going to look to sell put spreads here. I think in the near term, at least, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen a month from now or two months from now, but over the next couple of weeks, I would anticipate some of these energy products getting into some sideways consolidation or even bouncing to the upside. So with that outlook, I'll be looking to sell some put spreads or, or even put it on an iron condor on these energy products just to see if we can scratch out some profit from this nasty extreme on the downside. So that's one area that I'll be looking at. Nice to lock in some profit, book some profit on XLE late last week, and now we're, <clears throat> now we're looking to sell some premium here Monday or Tuesday. Let's take a look at Amazon as well. We talked about you know these big tech names being pretty active. We were fortunate enough here on Amazon to sneak out of a winning trade on the upside before things turned and got ugly on Thursday. So you can see we barely touched our full target on the long side. We booked our profit, snuck out of the trade, and now we're flat. If we do get a new setup here Monday or Tuesday, like I said at the top, I'll take the trade, 
I'm just going to take very small position size and I'll take and be taking some vertical spreads just to try to protect from the market getting choppy here heading into the holidays. So it's been, uh, been a nice profitable couple of trades there on, uh, on Amazon. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. We'll take a look at the financials. So here on Goldman Sachs, what was telling last week, anytime you start to get the financial sector to lead the charge to the downside, you know there's a very good chance that you're going to get follow through from the overall market. It's very difficult for the market to make a big move without participation of the financials. So looking at Friday's session, we did get that move to the downside. That was great. That leads me to believe that, you know, this is not just a short term move to the downside. If these financials stay weak, okay, we could really see something nasty on the downside over the coming week. So we did trigger into this trade on Friday. We almost hit full target into the close on Friday afternoon. Our full target was down at 175.08. We got down to 175.39. So at this point, we have to be locking in profit. We're not going to let this thing turn all the way back on us, get 95% of the way to full target, and then only take a break-even trade. So we're going to move that stop down. We're going to lock in profit. I'm going to look to move that stop um, right around 177.10. That way we lock a little bit of profit in, we give it a little bit of chance, a little bit of opportunity to, to hit full target, but we may get taken out here pretty early Monday morning, book some profit, and then move to the sidelines. So, so far so good on Goldman Sachs, but uh, looking at the strong open that we could potentially see Monday morning, we may end up getting taken out of that trade anyway. Let's zoom on over, let's take a quick peek at the reversal charts and then I'll wrap it up and we'll move on to trading live here Monday morning. So some of these reversal charts have been very, very good to us lately. The nice part about our reversal trade, oftentimes it allows us to get in sooner. When we can get in sooner, it allows us to, to profit from these quick moves back and forth. I just mentioned a few moments ago, we've had very little follow through in either direction. This reversal chart, because we, uh, we're able to get in early, we've been able to book some really nice profitable trades of late. So it's, it's really key, I personally believe, to have a good mix of setup types. I like to have these reversal charts going on a few names. It allows me to get in sooner. I like to trade the basic charts and the reentry trades, looking for some of the longer term trades. It's just a good mix of products. So here's Citigroup. Because of these big ranges that we've had back and forth, Lately, we've had some overbought and oversold extremes. We booked a partial profit here on the Citigroup long trade. We talked about this one um, last week. Okay, we got taken out. We didn't quite hit our full target, but we came pretty darn close. I mean, we're 99% of the way to full target. So again, we move our stop up, we lock in profit, and we took a really nice winner there on Citigroup. So now we're flat there. Um, on the Dow ETF, this one has just been absolutely dynamite for us of late. Let me zoom into this chart here. So we've had, over the past five or six trades, I mean, we've had a number of full winners. I believe we've had four full winners and a couple of break-even trades. So just an absolute ton of profit here on this Dow chart. We had this trade trigger in on Thursday of last week. You know, we've talked about it numerous times just in this video now. We saw what the market did Thursday and Friday last week. Got beat up, right? Well, we did a couple of things last week. First of all, we played the move to the upside early in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What did we see? We saw the market drift to the upside, and we saw the market close higher on Wednesday after the Fed statement. We booked a full profit there. We got overbought in the near term. Okay, so come Thursday, when we saw that selling pressure kick in, we grabbed a short trade there, uh, Thursday mid-morning. Okay, we came in Friday, saw the gap to the downside, and that's, that full target was hit very, very quickly. So we're in and out of this trade in 24 hours. I mean, that's just phenomenal. We saw a move to the downside. We saw volatility increase. This was a big winner for us on the downside. So a couple of full winners just last week on the Dow ETF. You can clearly see on Williams Percent R, we are oversold. So we can anticipate a bounce in the near term. And that's why I'm really not surprised taking a look at the futures here so far Monday morning. We're looking for a move to the upside. We'll see if we follow through. Um, again, anything new that sets up this week, I'm going to be taking it with a smaller position size. So really nice stretch there for uh, the Dow ETF. We'll wrap things up because my voice is just about gone here. 
we'll wrap it up with a take with a look at Tesla. Uh, Tesla's been very, very good to us also on the reversal chart. You can see we had a winner on the short side. We had a winner on the long trade. A couple really nice full winners there. And then um, come Friday, we did have this short trade that triggered in. 229.68 was the entry point. We barely touched that on Friday. So if you, for example, if you would have missed this trade Friday, you can come in Monday morning. I mean, the first target hasn't been hit. The stop hasn't been hit. So you can still grab this trade as long as we get back down to the entry point. So again, small position sizes here. Look to a long put spread. Look to the monthly options. Just all ways that we can be safer, being a little bit more conservative, just knowing that the market could get very, very slow here this week with the holidays. So that's the theme. Let's just protect capital as much as possible here this week. Uh, I'm going to still try to stay active just so I can you know, have trades on. allows me to stay focused and disciplined to my trading approach. But at the same time, you know, I, I don't want to protect that, that profit that we've had for the year so far. So let's see what this week gives us. As always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me. Uh, my direct email is mike at netpicks.com. And I'll try to get in here midweek, get a midweek update out, see what we can expect here into the end of the week. So enjoy your week, everybody. Happy trading. Let's see if we can book some profits into the end of the year.